Today, we're diving into the nostalgic world of fast food history. We'll explore seven beloved fast food menu items that have vanished over the years. From the 1930s to the 1980s, these items were once staples in American diets, but now they only live on in our memories. Number one, McDonald's McDLT, 1980s. The McDonald's McDLT launched in the mid 1980s was an innovative burger designed to keep the hot and cold ingredients separate until the moment of consumption. This concept was implemented using a specially designed two-sided styrofoam container. On one side, the hot portion contained the beef patty and bottom bun, while the cold side held lettuce, tomato, pickles, and the top bun. The idea was to maintain the optimal temperature and texture of each component, ensuring that the lettuce and tomato remained crisp and cool, while the beef patty stayed hot and juicy. Despite the clever design, the McDLT faced several challenges. The most significant issue was the environmental impact of the styrofoam packaging. In the 1980s, there was a growing awareness and concern about the environmental damage caused by non-biodegradable materials like styrofoam. The material was notorious for contributing to landfill waste and environmental pollution because it did not break down easily. This growing environmental consciousness among consumers and activists led to increasing pressure on companies to adopt more sustainable practices. Another challenge was the practicality and convenience of the McDLT's packaging. While the dual compartment design was innovative, it was also cumbersome. The large bulky container was not as convenient to handle or store as traditional burger packaging. Additionally, the process of assembling the burger by the consumer might have been seen as a hassle compared to the simplicity of a standard pre-assembled burger. From a marketing perspective, McDonald's invested heavily in promoting the MacDLT. The advertising campaign, famously featuring Jason Alexander, later known for his role in the TV show Seinfeld, emphasized the freshness and temperature separation of the burger components. The tagline, keep the hot side hot and the cool side cool, highlighted the product's unique selling point. However, despite these efforts, the McDLT did not achieve the long-term success McDonald's had hoped for. Moreover, the McDLT's introduction came at a time when fast food menus were becoming more diversified, and consumers were increasingly interested in healthier options. The emphasis on fresh ingredients was appealing, but the overall concept of a traditional beef burger did not align with the emerging trends towards lighter and healthier fast food choices. This shift in consumer preferences further contributed to the McDLT's eventual phase-out. Number 2. Burger King's Yumbo, 1968-1974 briefly reintroduced in 2014. Burger King's Yumbo, first introduced in 1968, was a hot ham and cheese sandwich featuring warm slices of ham, melted American cheese, lettuce and mayonnaise on a toasted hoagie bun. This item was an attempt by Burger King to diversify its menu offerings beyond the typical burgers and fries. The Yumbo quickly became a favorite among customers who enjoyed the combination of savory ham and creamy melted cheese. The sandwich stood out due to its unique assembly and flavor profile. The hot ham provided a hearty, meaty base, while the melted American cheese added a rich, gooey texture. The lettuce and mayonnaise contributed a fresh and creamy balance, making each bite satisfying. The hoagie bun, toasted to perfection, offered a crisp exterior that complemented the sandwich's soft and warm interior. Despite its initial popularity, the Yumbo was discontinued in 1974, likely due to shifting consumer preferences and the introduction of new menu items. Fast food trends in the 1970s were rapidly evolving, with an increasing focus on burgers and more innovative offerings. The Yumbo, while beloved, did not fit into the changing landscape as Burger King sought to streamline its menu and focus on its core products. In a surprising move, Burger King reintroduced the Yumbo in 2014, hoping to tap into nostalgia and attract both older customers who remembered the original and new customers curious about the retro offering. This reintroduction was part of a broader trend where fast food chains brought back discontinued items to generate buzz and drive sales. However, the 2014 version of the Yumbo did not include lettuce, simplifying the sandwich to just ham, melted cheese, and mayonnaise on a toasted hoagie bun. Despite the initial excitement, the modern Yumbo failed to resonate with contemporary consumers in the same way the original did. The fast food market had become even more competitive, with a plethora of options and changing tastes favoring more diverse and healthier choices. The brief reappearance highlighted how much the fast food industry had transformed since the Yumbo's heyday. 
the simplified ingredients of the 2014 version were perhaps not enough to compete with the more elaborate and gourmet-style sandwiches that had become popular. Additionally, the marketing push, while nostalgic, did not capture the same widespread appeal needed for sustained success. Number 3. Taco Bell's Bell Beefer, 1970s-1980s Taco Bell's Bell Beefer, introduced in the 1970s, was an interesting menu item that deviated from the chain's typical offerings. It was a hamburger bun filled with seasoned ground beef, diced onions, shredded lettuce, and mild sauce. This item was Taco Bell's version of a sloppy joe, catering to American tastes while still maintaining a bit of Taco Bell's signature flavor. The seasoned ground beef used in the Bell Beefer was the same as that in Taco Bell's tacos, providing a familiar taste with a different presentation. The addition of fresh diced onions and shredded lettuce added a crunch, while the mild sauce brought a tangy note to the mix. The soft hamburger bun provided a different texture compared to Taco Bell's usual tortillas and shells. This sandwich gained a following among customers who wanted something different from the usual Mexican-inspired options. It offered a hearty, savory meal with a combination of textures and flavors that was both satisfying and unique. The Bell Beefer was particularly popular with those looking for a more traditional American sandwich experience at a Mexican fast food restaurant. However, the Bell Beefer's time on the menu was relatively short-lived, disappearing by the mid-1980s. One reason for its discontinuation was the evolving preferences of fast food consumers. During this time, there was a growing interest in more varied and healthier menu options. The Bell Beefer, with its rich and hearty profile, did not fit well with these new consumer trends. Additionally, the logistics of preparing the Bell Beefer added complexity to Taco Bell's kitchen operations. Unlike the more streamlined assembly of tacos and burritos, the Bell Beefer required a separate set of ingredients and preparation steps, which slowed down service. In the fast-paced world of fast food, efficiency is crucial, and the Bell Beefer's extra preparation time made it less practical to keep on the menu. Marketing also played a role in its demise. The Bell Beefer did not receive the same level of promotional support as other Taco Bell items, Without strong advertising to maintain customer interest, it gradually faded from the public's memory as newer and more exciting products were introduced. Number 4. Wendy's Superbar, 1980s, 1990s. Wendy's Superbar, a feature from the 1980s to the 1990s, offered an all-you-can-eat buffet experience that was unique for a fast food restaurant. It included three main sections, a salad bar, a pasta bar, and a Mexican bar, each offering a variety of ingredients and sauces for customers to create personalized meals. The salad bar was stocked with fresh vegetables, toppings like croutons and bacon bits, and multiple dressing options. It catered to those looking for a lighter, healthier meal, while still enjoying the convenience of fast food. The pasta bar included different types of pasta, such as spaghetti and rotini, along with sauces like marinara and alfredo. Diners could mix and match to their taste, creating a variety of pasta dishes. The Mexican bar featured items like taco meat, refried beans, shredded cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, and taco shells. Customers could build their own tacos or nachos, adding a touch of Tex-Mex flair to their dining experience. This section was particularly popular for its bold flavors and the ability to customize each bite. One of the main attractions of the Super Bar was its value. For a relatively low price, customers could enjoy an unlimited amount of food, making it a popular choice for families and those with larger appetites. The variety offered by the Super Bar also meant there was something for everyone, appealing to a wide range of tastes and preferences. However, the logistical challenges of maintaining the Super Bar eventually led to its demise. Keeping the buffet stocked and clean required additional staff and resources, which increased operational costs. The need for frequent restocking and the potential for food waste added further complications. Ensuring the freshness and quality of the food in an all-you-can-eat setting proved difficult in a fast food environment, where speed and efficiency are critical. Additionally, the Superbar's space requirements were significant. The setup took up considerable room within the restaurant, limiting seating capacity and the ability to serve more customers during busy times. This inefficiency in space utilization contrasted with the fast-paced nature of Wendy's core operations. The changing landscape of fast food also played a role. By the late 1990s, 
consumer preferences were shifting towards more specialized and streamlined menus. The rise of drive through service emphasized speed and convenience, which did not align well with the buffet concept. As fast food chains adapted to these new trends, the Superbar's appeal diminished. Number 5. McDonald's Arch Deluxe The McDonald's Arch Deluxe, launched in 1996, was an ambitious attempt to cater to adult palates. It featured a quarter-pound beef patty, peppered bacon, leaf lettuce, tomato, American cheese, onions, ketchup, and a mustard mayo sauce on a sesame seed bun. The burger's marketing emphasized sophistication, targeting a demographic that McDonald's typically did not focus on. The campaign for the Arch Deluxe was one of the most expensive in McDonald's history, with estimates suggesting that the company spent over $150 million on advertising. The advertisements depicted the Arch Deluxe as a premium product, often showing adults enjoying the burger in upscale settings, which was a stark departure from the usual family-oriented marketing approach. The ingredients of the Arch Deluxe were selected to appeal to a more mature taste. The quarter-pound beef patty aimed to provide a more substantial and satisfying bite. The peppered bacon added a layer of spiciness and complexity, differentiating it from the standard bacon used in other McDonald's offerings. The leaf lettuce and fresh tomato were intended to give a fresher, more gourmet feel compared to shredded lettuce. The mustard mayo sauce was a distinctive feature, combining tanginess and creaminess to enhance the overall flavor profile. Despite these efforts, the Arch Deluxe did not resonate with the intended audience. One major issue was the price. Positioned as a premium product, the Arch Deluxe was more expensive than other items on the menu, which may have deterred cost-conscious customers. Additionally, the taste, while different, did not significantly stand out to justify the higher price point for many customers. Another factor in the Arch Deluxe's failure was the marketing approach itself. The advertisements, while memorable, may have alienated McDonald's core customer base. By focusing so heavily on appealing to adults and distancing itself from the family-friendly image, McDonald's created a product that seemed out of place in its lineup. The contrast between the sophisticated marketing and the fast food setting may have confused consumers about the brand's identity. Operationally, the introduction of the Arch Deluxe also presented challenges. Preparing a more complex burger with premium ingredients slowed down the service in a system designed for speed and efficiency. This additional time and preparation contradicted McDonald's core value proposition of quick and convenient meals. The Arch Deluxe remained on the menu for about a year before being discontinued in 1997. Its brief existence serves as a case study in the difficulties of repositioning a well-established brand. Despite its failure, the Arch Deluxe is remembered as a bold experiment that pushed the boundaries of fast food marketing and product development. Number 6. Burger King's Cheesy Tots, first introduced in 2007. Burger King's Cheesy Tots, introduced in 2007, quickly became a beloved side item. These bite-sized tater tots were filled with melted cheese, combining a crispy exterior with a gooey, cheesy interior. This contrast in textures made them a favorite among Burger King patrons. Cheesy Tots stood out due to their unique preparation. The outer layer was made from shredded potatoes, seasoned and fried to perfection, creating a crunchy shell. Inside, the melted cheese added a rich and savory element, enhancing the overall taste experience. This combination appealed to customers looking for a comfort food snack that was both satisfying and indulgent. Despite their popularity, Cheesy Tots were not a permanent fixture on the menu. Burger King often removed them, only to bring them back for limited runs. This cyclical availability created a sense of urgency and excitement among fans who eagerly awaited their return each time. The sporadic reappearances turned Cheesy Tots into a cult favorite, with dedicated customers frequently checking to see if they had made a comeback. Marketing for Cheesy Tots capitalized on their nostalgic appeal and indulgent nature. Advertisements often highlighted the cheesy, melty center and the satisfying crunch of the outer shell. These campaigns resonated with both younger audiences and older customers, seeking a nostalgic snack reminiscent of their childhood. Operationally, Cheesy Tots were a relatively simple item to prepare, fitting well into Burger King's fast-paced kitchen environment. Their popularity also boosted sales, as customers often added them to their meals as an extra treat. However, their intermittent availability was likely a strategic decision to manage production costs and maintain customer interest. 
The periodic removal and reintroduction of cheesy tots also allowed Burger King to test and adjust the product based on customer feedback. Each reappearance often saw slight tweaks to the recipe or cooking method, ensuring the product met evolving consumer tastes. This iterative approach helped maintain the high quality and appeal of cheesy tots. Cheesy Tots also played a role in broader fast food trends, where limited time offerings create buzz and drive traffic. By leveraging the popularity of these snacks, Burger King kept its menu fresh and exciting. This strategy not only satisfied existing customers, but also attracted new ones curious about the latest limited time offerings. Number seven, Pizza Hut's Piazzo, 1985-1987. Pizza Hut's Piazzo, introduced in 1985, was a bold attempt to elevate the traditional pizza experience. This dish was a deep dish, stuffed pizza that resembled a pie more than a typical pizza. The Piazzo was designed to offer a more gourmet experience, featuring multiple layers of cheese, meats, and vegetables, encased in a thick, buttery crust. The Piazzo came in several varieties, each with its own unique combination of ingredients. The Milano, for instance, included layers of pepperoni, Italian sausage, and cheese, while the Florentine featured spinach, ricotta, and other cheeses. The Roma had a mix of meats and vegetables, offering a rich and hearty meal. These variations allowed customers to choose based on their preferences, making the Priazzo a versatile option for different tastes. The preparation of the Priazzo was more complex than that of a standard pizza. Each Priazzo was carefully layered and baked to perfection, which required additional time and skill in the kitchen. The dough was made to be thick and robust, capable of holding the dense fillings without becoming soggy. The multiple layers of ingredients ensured that each bite was packed with flavor, making it a substantial and satisfying meal. Despite its initial popularity, the Piazzo faced several challenges. The extended preparation time was a significant issue. Unlike regular pizzas, which could be assembled and baked relatively quickly, the Piazzo's intricate layering process slowed down kitchen operations. This increased wait times for customers and reduced the overall efficiency of Pizza Hut's service model, which was built around speed and convenience. Additionally, the cost of ingredients and the complexity of preparation made the Priazzo more expensive to produce. This higher production cost translated into a higher price point for customers, which may have limited its appeal. While the Priazzo offered a gourmet experience, the fast food market was highly competitive and price sensitivity was a crucial factor for many customers. Marketing efforts for the Priazzo highlighted its unique qualities and gourmet appeal. Advertisements showcased the rich layers of ingredients and the pie-like structure, positioning it as a premium option within the Pizza Hut menu. However, these efforts were not enough to sustain long-term interest, especially as the operational challenges became more apparent. The Priazzo was discontinued in 1987, just two years after its introduction. Despite its short lifespan, it remains a memorable part of Pizza Hut's history. The Priazzo represents an era of experimentation and ambition, where fast food chains explored new ways to enhance their offerings and attract a broader customer base.